recently I bought myself this as a little project, a BMW 320i. Um, it's a M54 engine, 2.2 straight six. Uh, it's done 122,000 miles, and well, I paid 300 pound for it. So well, let's see how it drives. Still can't get the bloody seatbelt. <laughs> Yep, you heard me right. My BMW 320i saloon cost me £300. In fact, less than what I paid for my last bicycle. This particular 320 is a 2001 E46 SE model, uh, which comes with air conditioning, cream half leather interior, cruise control, multifunction steering wheel, electric windows front and back, and a CD player. The car is sitting on 16 inch alloy style 42 wheels, wearing 205 55 16 tyres. As standard, this car will put out 170 horsepower and 155 pounds per torque. This is enough to propel it to 60 in 8 seconds and onto a top speed of 140. With lockdown looming over us a few weeks ago, I decided that the perfect thing to keep me busy would be a project car. I want the satisfaction of restoring and improving a beautiful 20-year-old family saloon. So, the reason I went for this particular car is I had only a couple of rules really. One, it needed to be rear wheel drive. Two, it needed to be cheap, because I'm poor. And three, well, it needed to be fun. Now, when you buy a car for £300, naturally there are going to be one or two worn out bits. The first of which were all four tyres were basically racing slick, so had to be promptly swapped out. Next up was to trace a horrible burning smell coming into the cabin. We quickly found it to be the cam cover gasket, so £30 and two and a half of hours of my time later I had it fitted and then no more burning smell. Not content to let me drive home without incident on a lovely March day, in typical E46 style the ear window regulator decided to pack up. Fortunately, £28 later from eBay and another one was in and the window works just fine. Otherwise, the engine pulls strongly, the gear change is a tiny bit slushy, but that'll probably just be a couple of bushes on the gear linkage. Um, it, you know, otherwise, it's plenty powerful enough for me at the moment. Sounds alright, sounds smooth. Pulling cleanly through the revs, there's the Vanos engaging. Feels nice, feels smooth. It's an enjoyable engine to work through. Brakes feel okay, there's no shuddering or anything through the brakes, it's not pulling to one side when I'm braking either, this fills me with lots of confidence, with a £300 car I was expecting at least one of them issues. Um, the steering wheel does not quite centre, as I will show you in a second when I get to a straight bit of road. See, as you can see here, I'm currently pointing exactly straight and my steering wheel is very slightly to the left. That's not the end to my list of problems either. The remote locking on both keys does not work. Uh, I have an airbag light for the offside front door on there as well. So lovely. Oh, and did I mention? As I can tell, the front wishbone rear bushes are on their way out. Um, the differential bushes, as you can hear there, are on their way out. I have a slightly squeaky seat, which is annoying me a little bit, but it's hardly the worst thing in the world. Not to worry though, as roughly £150 later, I have polyurethane bushes to replace all the aforementioned ones. So it should sharpen it right up. Coilovers are also on the agenda for this car, so any recommendations on brand, please feel free to let me know in the comments. So, on to what I like and what I don't like about this car. Things I'm impressed about with this car. Um, Smoothness of the engine. Um, I've driven other six cylinder cars, uh, various cars. I've driven a couple of Mercedes, I've driven a couple of Jaguars, um, just general ones. Uh, this M54 engine is among one of the smoothest I've ever driven. The power delivery on it is absolutely buttery smooth. The Vanos kicks in beautifully at around three and a half to four thousand as it should. Um, it pulls relatively strongly. 
Um, don't get me wrong, it's not the talkiest engine in the world, but I don't feel that that's what it was designed to do anyway. It feels like it was the kind of engine that deserves to be revved and enjoyed. Um, it's not completely gutless, it will get you where you need to be if, you know, if need be. I'm pretty sure it will quite gladly pull me straight up to illegal speeds if the desire were ever needed on track, for example. But otherwise, yes, I'm really happy with the engine. Uh, one thing I'm not happy about, cup holders. There are none. There are no cup holders in this car. I genu genuinely thought BMW would be the sort of people that would think of everything. Um, when it came to a car, I mean, they thought of storage. There are very, fairly large bits of storage. There's storage there, there's storage under the passenger seat as well. Um, you know, there's even a glove box on the driver's side. That's the first time I've actually had that on a car. Um, but yeah, no cup holders. This is designed, I'm sure this is designed to be like a, a semi-luxury um, saloon. What sort of semi-luxury saloon that a business bar businessman would buy would they not think, where the hell am I going to put my coffee? If one were so inclined. I personally hate coffee, but each to their own. I like hot chocolate though, so where the hell can I put my hot chocolate? <sighs> Another thing. This car is geared quite short. Um, I'm currently in fourth gear, doing 30 miles an hour. It's doing 1500 RPM. I can switch to fifth gear, it will sit quite happily without struggling. It's now doing 1250 RPM. Um, when I'm on the motorway, at sort of motorway speeds, the engine, even though when I'm doing around 70 miles an hour, is doing still just over 3000 RPM. I feel like the fifth gear on this, or just the general ratio, could be a bit longer. So I might in future look into putting possibly a diff on the back from one of the higher powered cars just to try and bring the gear ratios down a bit. Um, I will use this on the motorway a fair bit, so if I need better acceleration, I'll just stick to the lower gears. Uh, uh, yep, that's pretty much on that front. Um, otherwise, just the interior in general, and it's lovely, it's not to everyone's taste. Cream leather, it never is. You always, you know, people have told me this reminds me of their old Rover. Thanks, Mum. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's gen generally in quite good condition, but just odd little bits like this bit up here. It's just coming away a bit, just up there. Um, it's doing that a couple of places, otherwise it's not bad. I've seen E46s with the roof lining hanging completely down before. This one is still very solidly in place, which I'm quite pleased about. Um, I say, other than that, the, in qu the quality is fairly good. It has aged, I think, fairly well for a car of the age. Um, it certainly makes my it makes my Solerio feel a lot less luxurious. You know. Um, other than that, all the switches are located in nice, convenient places. Traction control, radio, stereo, all that. Nice, clear buttons located exactly where I'd expect to find them. Um, buttons on the steering wheel are all nice. Volume control, cruise control. You know, all exactly where I'd like them. The lights just over here, exactly where I'd like them. Handbrake right next to me. Armrest, the part of it is exactly where I'd expect to find it. It is a very well laid out car for comfort. Even here, lovely little vanity mirror. But when I want to check how bad my hair is when I'm on my way to work in the morning. Spoiler alert, it always looks bloody terrible. Um, even here, little tiny spotlights instead of just the main light. If the passenger needs to look at something or they're reading something as they're going along, the fact that it aims straight down and doesn't blare around is a very good idea. There are lights in the back as well. Um, you know, it is a very well laid out car. That is something I really like about it, apart from the, the lack of cup holders, obviously. Um, otherwise, the car is very quiet as well. I mean, there is a bit of road noise coming from it at the moment, but to be honest, it does have fairly budget tyres on it. It is what I could get hold of at the time. 
So the, the ones that are on the front are um, Hankooks. They are fairly good quality. They feel quite positive on the front end. The ones on the back, I think I have a land sail on one side and a sail in Antares, whatever it is, on the other side. And I'm not going to lie, they have absolutely no grip whatsoever in wet conditions. Um, if I go near the throttle on a slightly slippery, slightly slippery road with the traction control on, I see the light flickering at me with not much prompting, to be honest. Uh, so that will definitely be sorted at some point. Um, I'll probably get, be getting new wheels before I wear the tyres out. So it, I'll probably... I've not decided completely what brand I'm going to be getting yet, but who knows? Any suggestions for tyres, please let me um, please let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, thank you very much for thank you very much for watching, and uh, was it? Keep stay tuned for more videos in the future. Thank you.